What's going on guys, welcome back to another beer review. Today we're trying another one by Cloak and Dagger, it's Roots to Pluto. Um, it's got really awesome artwork, take a moment to look at that guys. As always, it's what you expect with Cloak and Dagger. Really, really cool. Um, this time obviously it's a take on, um, you know, like outer space, but just always done in such a cool fashion, always done in a similar way to the other ones. Obviously it's definitely got a style, but really cool can, uh, can artwork here guys. Um, so in terms of what we're looking at for this beer, it's a DDH Hazy Pale. I think on Untapped it said it was New England, but I think sometimes those are all, all used interchangeably. So double dry hop we're looking at. Um, in terms of the hops we are actually looking at, we're discussing it's Citra, Yukonor, Amarillo, Eldorado, Mosaic and Chinook. All of those I'm familiar with, but I'm not used to seeing quite so many in a beer. There's um, six six types of uh, hops, which is pretty cool. I'm quite intrigued to see the flavours that that's going to bring. You know, if it's going to keep up with the um, with the really so far so good kind of uh, reputation Cloak and Dagger have built uh, with me. So, um, when it's worth... Um, Get into this one in just a few seconds. We're not looking at a hugely strong beer here, guys. We're looking at 5.5%, so 2.4 UK units. This is a 440 mil can. Um, but with that said, I think it's worth just cracking into it. I know I always say the little tagline that it says on these um, cans. So this one says, let's travel at magnificent speeds around the universe. Nice and simple, um, but, but nice. It always links to the beer somehow, so. Um, with that said guys, I think it's worth just cracking into it. I'm intrigued to see what the colour will be. Alright, let's not try to make repeat mistakes. Let's just get that completely open. We may have to speed this up because uh, I can't see any beer in that. But there we go. If you guys bear with me a second, I'll just grab a tissue. Alright guys. Okay, I'm trying to think if I can say anything more while that head goes down. So to give you some context of Cloak & Dagger, if you guys haven't been here before, or if you've not clicked on any of my other Cloak & Dagger beers, um, they're a Worthing-based brewery, so I tend to find them in my local um, uh, bottle shops. So um, Worthing's in West Sussex, I live in East Sussex. They're kind of um, pretty, pretty popular, really, I would say. Still microbrewery, you know, still craft, obviously, not on any sort of... Um, supermarket level of distribution or anything um, but definitely definitely a popular one you know they're very complete with their artwork very precise they've clearly got a sort of style going on and it's not a not really sort of like a lack of I don't know um lack of money or whatever sort of thing yeah um, clearly got designers and that kind of thing so a pretty well um well established craft brewery um I've had a few beers by them now <clears throat> so I've had the um, Pray to the Deity beer, um, what else have I had? I've had a pineapple sour of theirs. Um, for the moment, another one's missing me, um, but I'm sure it'll come back at some point. Um, I do still have a few of theirs. I've got two more in my back stock of theirs, I believe. Um, I think I've got Cherry Sour and ages and ages ago, um, when I first reviewed their uh, double IPA, Pray to the de uh, Deity, um, in the picture you can see in the thumbnail of that there's a Hell's Lager as well, I do still have that, that is going to be reviewed, but that'll probably be in the next few months um, coming up, so I'm going to try to pull this a little bit more conservatively because the head's starting to go down, I feel like we could get a sip off of that, you know, we get it out of there, but I do want to have a bit of a, you know, a nice authentic, um, authentic sip. Um, that being said, I'm probably going to have to battle the head a little bit because I don't want to keep it sitting here rambling to you guys for ages. Um, but maybe let's just take one more minute to have a look at that amazing artwork. Um, this is all manual focus, it's not going to auto focus for you guys, but you get the picture. So cool. Just amazing. Just really cool um, concept. They always, they just have really amazing concepts of each of their beers. Maybe that's what I'm trying to, the sort of point I'm trying to make with Cloak and Dagger. They don't seem to do anything half-heartedly, which is really nice. Like, why not put 100% in every single beer that you brew? I just think that's a really nice kind of, um, kind of idea to go by. Really good. I don't think you can fail, which is why I think they're quite popular. Um, as you guys can tell, I'm pretty favourable towards them. I don't want that to harsh my judgement, 
um, with this beer, as all with any other sort of future beers that I uh, sort of review for them. It's quite difficult to not look at them through sort of rose tinted glasses because they are so um, just so such a nice, really well done brewery. They seem to really be doing what they're doing really well. Um, but anyway, guys, kind of blabbing so that that head will go down. Um, if we talk about the colour a little bit, we're looking at a nice yellowy orange there. Not too dark or anything. Uh, let's talk about thickness. Definitely hazy. Definitely agree with haziness. A very, actually very difficult to see my... It's a lot thicker than it seems. It really doesn't seem that thick. Um, but I can't make out my fingers behind it. So that's an interesting one. For being such a light coloured beer, I would expect it in like a more amber coloured beer. But not this kind of straw coloured beer. But anyway guys, I think it's worth just battling through that head and giving it a sip. Let's go. Very strong hops. Very piney. Very, very piney. In terms of smell, I realise I've been blabbing for ages and I haven't mentioned the smell at all. It's fairly fruity. I'm a little bit piney on the nose, but a real, real pine that I'm getting in my mouth. Let's see if we can let that flavour develop a little bit more and give it a few more sips. A bit floral as well. Yeah, really floral and strong in my mouth. Kind of woody and piney. Not very sweet. A little bit sweet with the floral, but not too sweet really. Um, definitely a bit more of... Um, I don't really like using this word, but they definitely look more dank. Um, I don't know if it's a, it's, uh, I can't sort of pick out each individual hops. Obviously I said there's six, you know, Citra, Yukonor, Amarillo, Eldorado, Mosaic and Chinook. So a lot, a lot. Um, and obviously all contributing to this flavour, but I'm not getting a very sweet kind of fruity flavour. Appreciate they haven't told me that's what I'm meant to expect. Um, but that's not what I've, not what I've found. Definitely more of the dank bitter. Um, hoppy kind of flavour that you get with uh, with some IPAs. It's definitely what I'm finding with this one. Hazy I do tend to associate with juicy and this one isn't particularly juicy but it's still a, a, a nice enjoyable one I would say. Um, I don't really know if the flavour profile is going to develop that much. Um, I'll say that and then I'll be sipping this to the rest of the night and it'll probably change a little bit but there's only so much you can you can capture in a in a sort of eight to ten minute video. Um, I don't think I'll sip it a lot much more than what I have done. Obviously I finish, always finish my beers, but um, on camera um, I think I've kind of got all the flavour I can. I don't really feel like I'm getting um, a huge amount, like I said, of any sort of sweetness. So I'm kind of falling back on using the words like resinous and piney because that's really the main flavours that I've got with this beer. It's, still, it's really, really enjoyable as all Cloak and Dagger beers are. Um, but I'm not finding it has too much of a particular depth. It had just a nice, nice mouth feel. Um, that slight fail of me pouring, we say slight, um, and the, you know the very, very foaminess and the sort of um, lot takes a while to go down head um, is probably down to me rather than the beer. So I'm not going to mark them down on that. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's not really giving me too much more than like what I've already said, spiny and that kind of thing. Um, so with that being said, guys, in terms of what I'm going to give it out of five, I think I'm going to give it three and a half. I still find it really, really enjoyable. It's really hitting a lot of marks for IPA, but I'm not really getting a huge kind of development or depth of flavour in it, which is a shame. I think, you know, putting putting um, a cloak and dagger on a pedestal, you know, uh, it's not always the best thing. And in this case, it's kind of shown me that um, that you know, not every, not every single beer that they brew is, is, is perfect, at least not for my palate. Um, you guys might disagree. If you guys are here because you enjoy Cloak and Dagger, um, definitely, definitely recommend looking at my other beers as well. Um, and just keeping in mind that I have got other reviews coming as well. Obviously, if you're not here for that, I'd always, always, always recommend get, going out and trying some Cloak and Dagger for yourself. As always, my beer, my reviews are not sponsored whatsoever, um, but they're still a very fun, playful brewery that I really, really enjoy. I'm not going to let this um, uh, let this beer, you know, ruin how I feel about them whatsoever. So that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a like, watch some more videos, subscribe, give me comments, etc., etc. I love to interact with you guys. Always love to interact with you guys. So. Um, with that being said, guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace.